Uh, can you see it? Yeah. You can go ahead. It's your okay. time now. Yeah. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, Mark and Fawaz and Qiri. And uh, my talk is going to be about how not to use a payment gateway. Uh, we all use uh, payment gateways kind of regularly now, past uh, with COVID-19. Uh, we pay for a lot of stuff online. And we usually use something like TAP, Fatura, UPay, Hisabi, etc. طبعا هذا الموضوع اللي راح اتكلم عنه انا ما يختص بس بالكينت. This also affects websites running PayPal. فاذا قاعد تستعمل PayPal, you can face the same issue as well. فالحين نتكلم اول شيء how does how does it work? The uh, payment gateways, how how do they work? بالبداية uh, انت راح تطرح ريكوست سو يو ويل ريكوست تو باي سمثينج فروم ا ويب سايت سو ا سيرفر اند ذا سيرفر ويل ريدايركت ذات بيمنت تو ا بيمنت جيت واي ذن ات ويل بروسس ات اند دو ات ثينج ذن ذا بيمنت جيت واي ويل ريسبوند باك تو ذا سيرفر اند جيف ات سمثينج كولد ا بيمنت يو ار ال اند ويل سند ذات تو يو ذن يو ويل اوبن اب ذس بيمنت يو ار ال اند ات ويل اوبن اب ذا كينت بيج Uh, if you pay and it was successful, then it will send you back to a success URL with data. So this is important. And then you will send this data and you will say, hey, I paid for this item or for this, this thing. And you will send it to the server. The server will check and it will say success and it will capture it. Uh, this is a, an explanation that you can read later on if you want. It's on uh, this website, smokeme.github.io. I'll share it later on. Uh, so in this scenario, how can it go horribly wrong? Guys, uh, we're sending the request, we're getting a URL to pay, we're paying, we're getting data, we're sending this data back to the server, then uh, the transaction is approved. So how can it go wrong? We remove Knet from the equation. So we kind of remove this this line, oh, this uh, this row. You pay to Knet, you get the data, then you send it back in and you do whatever. فهني, you will request from the server to buy something. You will hit the payment gateway. The payment gateway will give you back a URL. And the URL, you're just going to be taking something called payment ID from here. So if you notice, this is a payment uh, URL for Knet. And it has a get parameter called payment ID, which is the payment ID that you're going to pay for. And you will take that and you will make some fake information with that payment ID. You will send it to the server. And if the server is vulnerable, it will give you back a success uh, response. And uh, the, the reason that it, this happens is because uh, when you sign up, uh, sorry, when you first create a payment through Knet, uh, the payment gateway will give you some information. Uh, most importantly, our payment ID, which is what we found in the URL here. It will give you something called transaction ID, tracking ID, and a payment URL, which is what we use to, to communicate with Knet. Uh, a secure server will save all of this data and will use a transaction ID or tracking ID or whatever information that's hidden from the user to uh, verify the payment. Uh, but let me explain it in another way. I have something hidden here. So I'm sending the request to pay. I'm getting the payment URL and I'm getting something else. I go transaction ID and it's here. And the user doesn't have the transaction ID. So when he's paying, he gets data. And one of the pieces of data are the transaction ID. So when you send the transaction ID with the payment ID, the server will make sure that the payment was actually successful and then it will uh, successfully capture it. But if it was only verifying it through payment ID and not through another piece of information that the user doesn't have, which is transaction or tracking uh, IDs, then you can do something which is a payment forgery. You can send a request to the server with a, with a fake piece of information for the transaction ID and the tracking ID, and you can verify uh, sorry, and you can make the server capture it as if you actually paid. Uh, 
Uh, of course, there is another way of doing it. Uh, يعني, this is not a solution. في طريقة ثانية تقدر تصير. لأن عندنا success URL هم من عندنا شيء ثاني اسمه error URL. And the error URL sometimes will also have the payment ID, transaction ID, and tracking ID. So if if you by somehow was able to block uh, block the, block your website from going to the error URL and collect the payment ID, transaction ID, and tracking ID, and then send them back to the success URL, then you will uh, be able to, to capture the payment without actually knowing, without actually paying for all of this information. Uh, some websites can use uh, something like IP whitelisting, uh, only if a specific IP address visited uh, this page, it will uh, allow him to, to submit the data. Otherwise, it, it will block him. Uh, of course, there is something else called a result or response URL. Uh, I mentioned it right here. Uh, actually, well, yeah. So a results or response URL uh, based on your initial request. So when you make a request to, to get a payment URL, you send a success URL, a, a error URL, and the response URL. And when the transaction is successful, can it, uh, or the payment gateway itself will send uh, a post request to this response URL with all of the data that, uh, that, uh, that is associated with it. But if it was a successful operation or a failed operation, it will send it automatically to the server. From, from what I noticed, most plugins uh, using WordPress are ignoring the response URL we got standalone success URL only for uh, authenticating uh, the process multi payment. Uh, you can you can go deeply into this whole thing if you want to read it. Uh, this is my contact information. Uh, Fawaz at gencoded.com is my email. Uh, Twitter Q8 Fawaz O. Uh, and I'm done unless you guys have any questions. Uh, there's a question in the chats. If you click oh, in the chats. تحت just uh, put your mouse at the bottom and you can see the chats. Uh, there's a question is uh, where is the callback from PG to backend? Uh, sorry, what do you mean by PG? Uh, Gabandi, can you clarify? Payment gateway. Oh, okay. Sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, I'll get flooded. Uh, where is the callback from so normally you would have a response or a results url uh, if the transaction was uh, was successful or it had an error or whatever then it will uh, send back a request to this backend from the payment gateway this most most uh, people don't actually use it uh, that's why i'm talking about this whole thing Uh, there's a question for you. Have you seen an example of this in local sites? Uh, did you notify them? I've noticed it. I did not notify them. Uh, fearing retribution. Mm. Uh, speaking from past experience? Uh, just fear in general after talking to a lot of people. and uh, Don't do this. Uh, there are multiple questions. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, is this a standard that is followed by all the payment gateways or is it uh, specific to Knet? Uh, and then uh, PayPal, uh, they have something called IPN, which is kind of uh, which is kind of similar, uh, but you can exploit it uh, in different ways. Uh, so if you try to pay for something, you can change the HTML and uh, change the uh, the amount type any. Uh, yeah, I know. I know I'm teaching you guys about stuff. Sorry. Uh, you can change the amount type and send the request. So if something costs $100, you can change it to $1 in PayPal. Uh, you can also do the same thing if you know where the IPN uh, URL is. Uh, then uh, what's most important is the response URL, if you can find it, and the IPN URL in the case of PayPal. If you can find it, then you can possibly uh, make requests uh, so you can most likely forge requests. Uh, shift on us all. How can I protect my WordPress payment gateway? Uh, 
المشكلة إن you have to review the code yourself. Uh, I don't really like trusting uh, يعني code bases online, especially when it when it comes to payment, without actually reviewing the code myself. لاحظت أنا بواحد من ال payment gateways كان قاعد يستعمل هالطريقة. But that's why I kind of made this whole talk. Do you have any thoughts on uh, my fatura? Uh, I don't really have any thoughts about my fatura. Uh, nothing specific. Uh, what do you recommend to solve this? Okay, so to solve this, you should always use a response URL. I, I think I, yeah, how should it go? So after a user makes a payment and sends the payment ID back to the server, the server should make a request to the payment gateway asking about the status of this payment and then assigning it a proper status from the response. The, if I pretend in a, a payment went through, I give it the payment ID, your server should go and check my fatura or tab or whatever and send them the payment ID and ask for the status. The, never trust the user input. Then uh, the user can be evil. But you go and ask the server, did, did you finish this payment? Uh, yes, then uh, just uh, add the uh, proper information from the uh, response. Uh, yes, some developers are not checking that. Uh, there's a question for you. As a developer consuming the Payment Gateway API in Kuwait, what uh, would you advise based on your experience? Uh, I, I read the documentation uh, it's kind of stuck in my head but, uh, what I can think about uh, protecting the response URL by giving it a unique name so people cannot enumerate it easily uh, second thing is whitelisting the IP addresses uh, uh, there is some, some way of getting all of the IP addresses uh, from Knet uh, you should go and take those and whitelist them to a specific URL endpoint. So only those URL, uh, sorry, only those IP addresses can contact can contact this uh, this URL. Uh, otherwise, just block it, block any uh, any foreign IP addresses. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Well, I'm done. Uh, referring back to the, the blocking the IP addresses, China recently fought or recently before when Knet was attacked. Uh, if you remember, they were under DDoS. Uh, yes. So what they did is they immediately blacklisted all IPs globally. But then they started whitelisting specific IPs. With the yes. uh, late yom until today, the uh, ones that are in Japan, they can't get access to the site of Knet. And you have to also accommodate the end of customers or the thing. I mean, to make sure the customers can get even if they are traveling. That could be a use case that you don't consider initially, or could be any affecting your business. Oh, uh, true. But the 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 thing that I'm talking about, which is the response URL, should never be hit by user anyways. Like, مفروض إن ما حد يعرف اللي وراء هذا يكون سري جدا. And if anyone knows it, there is a possibility of forgery. Mohammed uh, Haddad, uh, no, you can't have the uh, the Kinet API. You have to ask for it, actually. So it's not public. We have less than a minute. Any other questions? Uh, anything, guys? For the shift to Al Qutanash, that's a hard thing. At it, Harash. <laughs> okay, I guess no more questions. Ah, there is one. Uh, okay. okay. The response Thank URL you is a kind of generated URL. There's a question for you. Uh, no, it's a, it's a URL that you generate on your backend and you leave it as a, as a special case. So it only accepts post requests, min IP address, which is uh, 
which is knet. So let's say one two seven dot zero dot zero dot one. If it's that, if if it's that their 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 IP address, uh, you trust the the information that's coming from there. So it's uh, it's a unique way, and uh, you have to trust wh whatever is coming from that endpoint. So you want to secure it as much as possible, so no one can abuse it. Okay, time's up. Okay, thank you guys. Thanks a lot for us. Problem.